asked me to um, visit with you about my relationship with First Church here in Little Rock and about sort of discuss my faith journey and I didn't realize I'd been on a faith journey until you asked me that. And I started thinking driving here today of the steps and the um, ways in which I ended up at First Church, Little Rock, Arkansas. And actually, I'll try to keep this short, but I began to think, I grew up in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and went to First Methodist Church there. And my father died when I was very young. I was five years old, and my mother was steadfast in um, determining that we would go to church. She would bring her three children every Sunday, and she would, um, you know, drag us out of bed on Sunday morning and when we were very young, go to big church. And we did go to Sunday school some, but she insisted that we stay and go to church. And I can remember sitting in the pew next to a woman who wore a lot of bracelets and also had mints and gum in her purse. And I was fascinated with Mrs. McDaniels. And I don't think that's the reason, or maybe it is, that I wear so many bracelets now, but I started remembering that my journey began um, sort of subliminally when I didn't even expect that the church was going to have such a profound impact over a lifetime. But when you said, talk to me about your church, your faith journey, I remember going to First Methodist Church, not even understanding exactly what the church was about except that we were there every Sunday and that Mrs. McDaniels gave me mints, and that we sat in the same place, and that all through my life, the people who acknowledged my confirmation came from that church. The people who acknowledged my graduation from high school, many of them were people who we knew from church. All the ups and downs of roads, the graduations, the marriages, everything in our family had been somehow acknowledged or connected to First Church. So for years when I grew up and left Hot Springs and um, taught school in Fayetteville and then ultimately moved to Little Rock and taught at UALR and then worked in government and then ultimately in real estate and at all these different junctures, I would be somewhat um, distanced from church. I was always a Methodist. I always had very fond memories and strong ties to my church that I grew up in. But I was busy and I was teaching and I was working and I was, um, you know, late at night grading papers and I, I wasn't as active or involved. And part of the reason I realized was that I didn't want to leave my church that I grew up in and change my membership. I didn't know until First Church let me know that I could be a member here and still have an associate membership at my um, you know, family church of my youth, which was really important to me. And when I wrote the minister, who at that time was David Wilson, and said, I'm thinking that I really need to join and affiliate with a church in, in Little Rock where I live, he sent me a very long letter saying, I, absolutely, you have to belong to the church in the community where you live. That's where you participate. Those are your, that's your support network. This is what you're supposed to do. And I felt so much better about it because I was afraid to leave my um, umbilical cord to my um, church, my uh, hometown church. But through friends who brought me Sunday after Sunday to First Church to hear sermons by, um, you know, Jeannie Burton uh, when I joined Michael Maddox, Mary Jane Cole, and to then meet the people whom I have met in this church who have now become very close friends of ours and we all behave the same way. We care about 
each other, each other's neighbors, the birth of a child, the birth of a grandchild, the death of an animal. The, these are the things that a church gives you in your daily life that had I never joined because I thought, I can't leave that church. I'm, I'm turning my back on the church I grew up in. I would have missed this whole opportunity to um, have friends who've supported me, supported my husband, um, and you know, this is a, just a, a very, very special home with people who are real people and who want to help you on your life's journey and um, who have given me such a insight into God's love of all of us, regardless of our flaws and our um, shortcomings. I wanted some place that I felt that I was, I was accepted for me and that it was not about whether I ran in late to church or whether I wore the same thing three times in a row or whether I was on a committee immediately. I wanted the enlightenment, the friendship, the thoughts for the week, the ways in which to understand the teachings of our church and understand what being a Methodist meant, but I wanted it in a comfortable, non-judgmental, easy way. It's just a comfortable size and place for me, and I've never found people as warm and truly interested. I have people I now have become very close friends with who sit behind us, who sit in front of us, who sit... We do still sit sort of in the same mm -hmm. locations, Methodists do that. But these people check on us or call and say, come have pizza with us. And we talk about doctrines of the church. We talk about problems of the world, the problems of the community. Um, we talk about good things that are happening. And it all stems from an exciting kind of um, eclectic, interesting mix of people led by people who absolutely have gifts